where Lauren Southern's ideas weren't trumped, weren't made to look as not good ideas or as weak ideas. Um, and I think Destiny's able to get that again and again and again, those interactions with Lauren Southern, is because he's able to maintain a friendly relationship with Okay, her. so not too long ago, um, Mr. President Sunday, not Mr. President, formal, got a position, went on Destiny's stream and basically just called him a loser for talking to people like... Lauren Southern, Nick Fuentes, in a friendly way, without, you know, all the time challenging their ideas. Um, he really didn't like that. So, I would like to review that, um, because I think he makes a great job in this first video here, um, where he's responding to Rose Wrist, where Rose Wrist is reacting to President Sunday and Destiny's chat. Rose Wrist blows him up, obviously. Um, I honestly don't blame Rose Wrist for making that conclusion. But I think a lot of the conclusions President Sunday makes are minimizing. Or maybe just wrong. Um, but I, I think I'll, I'm going to comment as we go through this. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of make a claim and show why... Um, why I think President Sunday is so wrong in this because you'll see he didn't want to have a debate. He wanted to make his claim, you know, be very be very smart about it, you know, strategically set Destiny up to basically agree to the premise and then swap some of the parameters in that premise. To, even though the conclusion and um, the hypothetical still holds to be consistent, but some of the parameters are different. Um, and so Destiny, you know, classic little bait and switch. So Destiny already agreed to the prior hypothetical uh, hi, hi, previous premise, um, but then had some thoughts after some of the parameters. Were okay, well, let's start this. Destiny, a debate that only lasted eight minutes, actually. The fall. On the very short debate between President Sunday and Destiny, a debate that only lasted eight minutes, actually. The following is a response to a, quite frankly, extremely stupid review of my recent brief interaction with. He's always so salty, I love it. Destiny by Rose Wrist, in which the latter calls me a coward and a hypocrite. So I think there are two possibilities for why he left here. Possibility number one is he left because he was incapable or afraid to engage further in the conversation and essentially used that as an excuse to get out. Or number two, he agreed with Destiny, realized that his engagement was helping Destiny grow, and therefore went out for more of like a principled reason. And and so I think what Rose Rose just said, I think almost everyone, I think every layman watching would think that, especially if you're watching it from Destiny's perspective, as we'll see. I'm saying principle. Although I have to give it to President Sunday. He does an excellent job in this video of making his case and why he was justified in acting the way. Pulled for some of the things we're going to talk about later. And the funny thing is, honestly, I don't know which is worse. You know, reason one is it's fairly obvious to understand why that's like negative, right? And why that one is pretty bad. So uh, if the reason why he left is just because he wasn't able to engage anymore, that would just demonstrate that he hadn't thought through his arguments before expressing them publicly and that he crumbled at the slightest bit of pushback to his beliefs, that he's a bit of a spineless coward who leaves the conversation when it gets off script, and that he's kind of reinforced the stereotype that people like him are incapable of engaging in critical engagement with people live and hides behind one-sided reviews where you can carefully control what gets discussed. So it's fairly obvious why that's a bad reason. But let's take the more charitable interpretation, okay? He left because of, you know, because he was principled, essentially. He realized that, oh, what I'm doing right now is actually doing the thing I'm accusing Destiny of doing, so I'm going to stop doing this. Because now I know that that's bad, and I'm a principled person, so I'm not going to do it anymore. So once again, everything I'm about to say now is assuming that Sunday buys Destiny's argument, that Sunday's engagement with Destiny is helping Destiny grow, and that's why he left. Uh, this also demonstrates to some extent that he hadn't thought through his belief, and therefore acted in incongruence with this belief by coming on to Destiny's stream at all, essentially. Because this is like... A fairly easy thing to think about. You don't need to be like a philosophy lord if Destiny can figure this out. And Destiny's a smart guy, but 
if Destiny can figure it out in like just a few minutes of listening to you present your argument, you probably should have thought about that enough to be able to reach that conclusion. If that's something you feel comfortable tweeting about and even going into a debate with. Once again, we still have that issue with not really thinking things through. More pertinently, uh, probably, is the fact that this means that uh, President Sunday is a massive hypocrite. Rose's reasons for calling me such are interesting primarily. All right, and so now President Sunday is going to kind of knock down everything Rose Rose said, but again, keep in mind, even though President Sunday is very, very convincing in this video, we'll see why it falls flat later. If one is paying attention, which Rose obviously was not, because, as we shall shortly see, it highlights his own hypocrisy in a rather spectacular way. The accusation of cowardice doesn't merit a response besides noting the obvious. First, that if indeed I was so afraid of speaking to Destiny that this would motivate me to leave the call early, I would have simply refused the invitation altogether. This conversation was made on the basis of a tweet that offended Destiny and which was only tangentially about him. There was no pressing need for me to accept. This tweet from President Sunday. If we actually held political content creators to account for their little acts of treachery to their avowed causes, we wouldn't have Destiny more or less openly betraying everything he ever claimed to stand for out of greed, and hatred for other people doing his same bit. Second, I did not accept the invitation from Destiny for the pleasure of his company. I had a limited task in that discussion which, once accomplished, which it was, I was not going to needlessly imperil by gambling for no reason that a seasoned professional debater was not going to be able to eventually obfuscate the point if I fed him a continuous line of rope over the course of a series of... So I think that's a really important thing to remember. Because President Sunday's claim here is that he left... The debate with Destiny, the discussion with Destiny, whatever you want to call it, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Because President Sunday said it's not really a debate because he set up his premises. Um, there was really no argument put forward because Destiny agreed. So if there's no disagreement, there's no argument. Um, and then once Destiny started to push back, President Sunday left. So you kind of have to think... Why would you, I, I think you have to defend it in front of Destiny, because I think, and again, we'll see this, if, if you bring someone to some, someone, and even if you did a good job of setting up premises and you agreed, you did a little bait and switch with President Sunday did, and you did, he did a really good job of it, at the end of the day, you kind of have to defend that idea. Like, you can do a lot of good, uh, you, you can set up, you know, really flawless premises. That doesn't mean the conclusion is naturally going to follow or everyone's going to agree with that conclusion. You have to defend that conclusion. ...a superfluous endurance lapse because I am not a moron. And finally, if I were to be motivated by fear to leave the call, it certainly wouldn't be after my script had run out. The purpose of a script is that it keeps you to a structured plan. That plan had already succeeded. The point I had decided was my goal to make was made. It stood unaddressed, and all Destiny could do was attempt to reframe the conversation as if I was making a different case than that which I had been making the entire time. I wished him a good night and ended the call. As is, my goddamn right. We hadn't scheduled a debate. There was no agreed-upon scope or duration for the discussion, or even an agreed-upon topic. In short, I didn't leave the conversation early to begin with because there was no early. I left precisely when my purposes for the conversation were satisfied, i.e., right on time. Once again, this conversation concerned a tweet. Destiny had quote tweeted my remark on Twitter inviting me on to chat about it as a power play, and I obliged since it implicated him and thus it seemed appropriate to do so. Once I was satisfied I had made my case and detected that Destiny was going to try to obfuscate the point. And again, with the original tweet, President Sunday is talking about holding Destiny account for his original tweet, or, or in President Sunday's original tweet, he's talking about holding content creators to account for violations they've made to their openly held position. So for example, you know, Destiny's very sock dem or uh, liberal, whatever you want to call it, and say Destiny said something, you know, very conservative. Um, he believes that we should hold Destiny to account for that. But I think to do that, you have to argue with them. Otherwise, you're not really holding them to account because they'll always be able to weasel around it. You have to kind of, you have to present, you have to defend, you have to de de defend the accusation 
to hold them to account. Point. I mockingly accepted the terms of his red herring and excused myself on their basis. I find the fact that I have to spell this out a little bit disturbing given that among many other things, both Rose Wrist and Destiny, for all their other flaws, are generally described as intelligent. Now, moving on to the charge of hypocrisy, this is where things get interesting. Destiny's red herring is of particular concern here, as it is the one Rose relies upon to characterize me as hypocritically running afoul of my own argument, quote-unquote, which he characterizes thusly. The President's uh, Sunday's argument is essentially that, like, hey, when Destiny platforms people like Lauren Sutton and Nick Fuentes, uh, he is giving them a platform, he is giving them viewership, he is essentially... Uh, giving them just more resources, right? They're giving them content, whatever debates that they then profit from and they get resources and then they use these resources towards hurting minority groups. And because President Sunday believes that like Destiny's entire thing is built upon progressive values and not hurting minorities, President Sunday perceives this as like a betrayal of those values and therefore something worthy of critique. Destiny's argument in response to this was... And I would agree with President Sunday. I think you should hold, I think you should hold all hypocrisies to account. For all perceived hypocrisies to account. Do you either make the case that they're making the hypocrisy, make the argument for why they should change, or, you know, it could even happen that your perceived hypocrisy is incorrect, and then maybe you'll change your position. I think that's like would I think that's a very healthy way for content creators online to act. I think that's a good way to do it, like a little self-regulating market. Is that that's possible, but this is just difference in degrees of separation. So for example, you President Sunday are guilty of the exact same thing. Because from you coming up here, you know, even if you're a smaller creator, you're giving me content. You're making my stream more engaging. You're giving me higher viewership numbers than if I just sit here doing nothing. There's just one problem. This isn't my argument. It's Rose's. The following is from a video published in July entitled, Destiny Irresponsibly Platformed Lauren Southern in this debate. And, yeah. The key issue is that that was not what happened when they were playing League. Playing League, or like playing video games in general with somebody, is more like, okay, you're there for the person, or you're doing this with this person, or you're playing the game with the person, more than you are there to confront the ideas. So, there is sort of a more intrinsic, passive acceptance of the ideas that are being laid out, if that's not the focal point of what's going on. So, even in the Sargon debate, where things are pretty civil, they work through things, you know, in a non-aggressive manner, uh, the focus was still very much on the disagreement, and uh, the whole framing of the debate was that, okay, there's a disagreement here that we're trying to work through, while in the other discussion it was more like, okay, this can be interpreted as just two friends hanging out and, you know, having a bit of political conversation on the side. And that's negative, because it's giving a platform and it's granting legitimacy to Lauren Southern in this instance, which, I don't know if I need to remind you all of this, uh, is one of the, probably one of the worst uh, online political comic, uh, content creators when it came to radicalizing people to the far right. So, I actually disagree with that conclusion, and I'll talk about this later. Um, but, I think it's fine to be friends with people who you strongly disagree with. I think that's fine. And I think, honestly, like if you wanted to be cynical about it, what's probably the best way to to steal or convert an opponent concrete content creator's audience it's probably by by befriending them because if you're always hostile always bad faith always uncharitable and just always you know in general just aggressive towards that person they're probably not going to want to be with you because a lot of people online like might not always have the strongest opinions on everything and might just want to work out you know, something, um, and they don't want to feel like they're going to get dunked on viciously. So I think it can be really helpful. And I would hope most people, and I, I don't think what Sventus thinks this, but I, I kind of think Lauren Southern, even though she's very populist brain, very conservative, kind of tradcon, like team sports, politics kind of person, um, I think she does a good job of going to Destiny. And Destiny will do, a, going to Destiny and having an argument and I think Destiny does a really good job of disputing a lot of her claims um, and kind of showing that Lauren's conclusions are built on a house of cards. Um, they're not well substantiated. And I think the reason Lauren's willing to do that is because Destiny will be friendly to her all the time. Where if I would imagine if Lauren Southern were to talk to Vosh, I imagine Vosh would be looking to dunk on her 
very, very hard. He'd be looking to embarrass her. And you can do that once, and that'd be great. But you can only really do that once. Otherwise, people aren't going to want to talk to you. Or you're going to have a very unproductive conversation because people will be scared of getting dunked on or embarrassed. So they'll come in, and they'll be, like, they'll be looking to use all the debate tactics, obfuscate as much as they can, be very ambiguous, and just all around Weasley. So I think it, I think it can be very worthwhile to befriend people on the other side of the aisle in politics. And in case you had trouble following this, Rose Wrist helpfully clarifies in a pinned comment. Quote, Hey everyone, so it seems some people are still unclear as to exactly what the criticism I am levying is, so I thought I'd clarify a bit. My criticism wasn't in regards to the fact that Destiny was playing video games when he was having the conversation. Both of the other examples I praised in the video included Destiny playing video games, the discussion with Lauren and the debate with Sargon. Destiny is more than capable of having a debate while gaming. The distinction is that he was playing video games with Lauren Southern. The reason why I believe this distinction is meaningful is because I believe that it fundamentally alters the tone or the framing of the discussion. It carries with it a stronger implicit acceptance or legitimization of the ensuing discussion and viewpoints than if it had been purely a discussion. The framing, at least in the eyes of some portions of an audience, is no longer that these two individuals are on here to work out disagreements, but rather that they are playing games together and on the side having a bit of a chat about politics. I find this to be irresponsible as it puts Lauren as a person and her beliefs in a more casual light, I suppose. Now, I would like to add that the mode in which Destiny did hold the conversation is absolutely perfect for trying to change the opinions of an individual. The nature of the conversation lends itself towards charitability and a higher likelihood of potentially changing your mind. However, the fact that it didn't occur privately, but rather in front of thousands of people, is the issue. In regards to how well he pushed back, I think it was good. I would argue that it may be just so slightly below his average due to the relatively frequent game interjections slash callouts, and some long moments of silence due to both focusing on the game, but all in all, it's not the degree of pushback that I had an issue with, but rather the nature of the exchange. I hope this cleared some stuff up." Unquote. Indeed it did, Rose. Well said. To the point, however, not only was this not my argument, I was actually very deliberately not making any argument in my interaction with Destiny. Right, and so this is the kind of bait and switch I was talking about. And I'm saying bait and switch as if like that's a that sounds like a, a slimy thing to do. It wasn't slimy. It was really smart of him to do it this way. To explain what I mean, recall again that the impetus for my interaction with Destiny wasn't a specified disagreement about politics or ethics or anything of the sort. It was a tweet in which I characterize Destiny as an example of what people like Rose Wrist seem to become when they aren't held to account for irresponsible behavior, i.e. they become the kind of people who betray everything they once claimed to stand for out of greed and hatred. My task... And that's obviously everything, really everything, everything he stands for you think he betrayed? A little hyperbolic therefore, in my interaction with Destiny, was only to establish the veracity of this characterization. This is simple enough to do in abstract, but I had a handicap in that Destiny could at any point characterize me as a bad faith actor or any number of other disreputable things and obstruct my ability to make my case or terminate the call himself before I was able to do so, in effect using his disproportionate control of the arena to obstruct my argument. He has done so in the past. So... He's talking about ending the call. But he, like, President Sunday ended the call. I don't know. I don't think that really means anything. I think he's just talking about a tactic, not necessarily, like... Like, that's a bad thing, or, like, that's a... Low... Low character... Uh, character trait or something like that. I think he's just saying, like, I need to accomplish my goal. He has these options open to him. My if you, if you, you've got to... Yeah, okay, last question, then. Time. Last question, last question, last question. No, no, no just... Also, this is probably the worst example. Um, I think this is kind of a dishonest framing by President Sunday. So this video that President Sunday is using, um, it was after Destiny had watched Demon Mama and the Scrub King debate about... Um, it was like complimenting men um and demon mama was very um intransigent 
to the idea to the idea as a whole. Um, and this was the last thing Destiny was going to do, so he was going to end streaming anyways. So it was kind of like, the sooner I finish this, the sooner I'm done. Um, and previously, Demon Mama and him had an argument. And I would say, I would, I would hope, maybe I shouldn't say that. I think most people who aren't fans of Demon Mama can watch Demon Mama's stuff and understand, like, she can be a little bad faith, be very difficult in conversations, be long-winded. It, it could just be very frustrating to have a productive conversation with her, have a productive debate with her. Like, it always seems like she wants to derail, make accusations. Like, for example, she called the Scrub King an incel. Like, kind of just kept hammering that point, like, saying he's making um, incel points, which just didn't feel good. Um, so what Destiny did here... And he was really rude about it, um, and it is what it is. I don't think Destiny Destiny De- De- Destiny De- definitely doesn't like Demon Mama, so I think he's very okay with being rude to her. So he was basically just trying to, as quickly as possible, try to negate all Demon Mama's debate tactics by being long-winded, um, trying to obfuscate, gish gallop, whatever, and just force home all his points as quickly as possible. Essentially, the points that the Scrub King was trying to make, so make all of the Scrub King's points for him, get the concessions, and then finish talking. And then he ended stream. That's the example President Sunday is using. I'm no, serious. I'm last not, and then I'll answer, I'll answer three, and I'll answer, I will answer three in a review. I'm just, for the last one. No, no, no. Do you acknowledge no, no, that if, okay. you, if you disempower half of society, do you acknowledge um, that in a way that's empowering the other half? Uh, I guess it, I, it could. It Thank depends. you. I'm because so happy that you made, walked back every single argument look, that you gave. You are a worthless fuck piece of shit. Have, have a wonderful night. All right, whew, done with that. Okay. It was very amusing. And remember, he ended stream, like, right after that. So, I don't know. But it now... Like, I feel like President Sunday is almost kind of alluding to that this is a regular debate tactic of Destiny's. And I... The only other... I guess I have seen him leave... Like, with BX Bullets, that one time they were talking about the Alex Baldwin shooting. He left that one. <laughs> but BX Bullet was... He kept trying to make the same point that they had already addressed like 10 times previously. I think he just left out a complete frustration. But again, like that um, in the BX Bullet conversation, that was after, I don't know how long that debate was, but it was at least like an hour. So they had been talking for a while. It wasn't like they got 10 minutes in, he got a quick dunk, and he got out of there. I represented an exigency for which I had to prepare. My strategy, therefore, was to couch the premises I needed not to argue, but to demonstrate my case and examples that Destiny would be so reflexively hostile to that he would lower his guard and agree with my description of these premises, provided they showed the examples in a negative light and him in a sympathetic one. And it worked. Wait, what yeah, am I betraying good. out of greed? <laughs> okay, well, we can be... L- let me be as fair to you as possible, so if you'll allow me, I'll sort of recapitulate what I understand your situation to be. And then you can let me know if I'm being fair. Sure. Okay, cool. So what I was talking about here is concerned with how you deal with other content creators. Surprise, surprise. There's going to be nothing new here. So let's take Demon Mama as an example of what I'm talking about. Um, I like this one because it highlights the unfairness of the situation you're in. So this is, um, you know, the President Sunday showed the clip of Destiny talking to Demon Mama earlier. Destiny doesn't like Demon Mama, so he's probably very likely to agree to something negative about Demon Mama. And I think it's very smart of President Sunday to use that as an example to set up this premises before switching out that premises for Lauren Southern and Nick Fuentes or whatever, um, which is in it, it essentially be the same exact argument, just different players involved. So we know how Demon Mama got started as a very large online figure. Engagement with you of any kind is worth its weight in gold, yes? What this means is that if she can secure really any sort of engagement with you whatsoever, especially a hostile engagement. Uh Even if you successfully make her look like a fool, and I think there's definitely an audience that thinks that you have, and I've had moments, uh, her visibility skyrockets. Doesn't matter how well it goes for her in the moment, just pure benefit. Sure. And because she knows that, just regularly being associated with you at all supplies her with visibility as well as therefore money, people like that will do and say anything to get a response from you. Uh-huh. And no matter how abusive or dishonest she is because of your relative size, people will blame you for diverting your audience to terrorize her if you respond. Almost regardless of what you say, and uh, it gets worse actually because almost any response you make has the perverse result of signal boosting her platform. So defending yourself only encourages her to repeat the process. 
Um, again, it's perverse, but you in effect helped make her channel viable just by defending herself. Just by being you, and by being decent enough to give her the light of day. For a moment, you helped her find money and recognition just for interacting with you. Uh -huh. And then there's the snowball effect, where other people then seek out engagements with her to leech off of her increased visibility, further contributing to her growth, etc. Other examples abound. Keppel's made disgusting false claims. Oh, so I think it's kind of obvious that Destiny isn't paying the most attention here, but... Which, I mean, in the end, um, doesn't, it's not a great look for Destiny, because it kind of made President Sunday's... It made President Sunday's job... Made President Sunday's job a lot easier of laying out his premises and Destiny just agreeing uncritically. Things about you, and was likewise rewarded for it. So it doesn't matter how nice or mean you are, just by engaging with these people, you help them grow. So I think I get your frustration here. Am I being fair to you so far? Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like I say so, yeah. Demon Mama and Keffels both experience substantial growth, both in visibility and funds through the bare fact of interacting with Destiny at some point. Destiny agrees this is a fair characterization of his situation. Every element besides this was superfluous and deployed only to obfuscate the purpose of what I was doing so that his guard would be lowered so that he wouldn't obstruct the follow-up. Okay, cool. So, honestly, Stephen, I don't know how you explain this. Um, wait a second. I don't know... I don't know how you explain how you can help someone increase her funds and visibility who, in your words, literally flew to fucking France to get into a boat to help drown refugees, as well as said to a trans person you will never be a woman, or give a lifeline to Nick Fuentes on YouTube after he'd been excised from it entirely, as well as an advert for his cozy platform he probably couldn't have dreamed of. I don't know how you can explain abetting people like this, and then say that you haven't completely betrayed the communities they continue to predate upon this day, that you built your platform advocating for, which was to juxtapose this fact with specific needless interactions of a very particular sort, specifically the sort Rose character. And so that that was the bait and switch. Well done by President Sunday. Characterizes in his pinned comment read above with people who, in his own words, literally flew to fucking France to get into a boat to help drown refugees. It's crucial here that I was explicitly concerned with particular kinds of interactions with particular actors who in Destiny's and Rose's own avowed judgment actively engage in political activism with the intent to harm minority groups, specifically trans people and refugees in the case of Lauren Southern, and, well, it's probably easier to list the people who aren't targeted by Fuentes. I specify these two, Lauren Southern and Nick Fuentes, for precisely the reason Rose Wrist has in the past. I have no objection to Destiny debating with conservatives or even Nazis categorically, just as I never critique Vosh for doing so or anyone else. This can indeed be important and positive, provided it is done carefully and for a purpose. The problem, as Rose Wrist has adequately laid out for us, is that debate doesn't exhaust what Destiny does with Lauren Southern and Nick Fuentes. Destiny's channel now has a backlog of casual and friendly engagements with Lauren, despite her ongoing advocacy against immigrants and transphobia, giving her an opportunity to sidestep the social cost of well-known critiques of her vicious ideological positions and actions to sell herself to his audience on the basis of her charisma. With respect to Nick Fuentes, Destiny has declared that he would begin operating on Nick Fuentes' own YouTube-slash-Twitch alternative, Cozy, effectively advertising it to a massive audience who might otherwise have never even heard of it, directly increasing its viability as a result. Big news about the Cozy platform. You probably have already seen it, but this is really exciting stuff, and I'm very proud to announce tonight that Stephen Bonnell, better known as Destiny, has officially joined Cozy.tv. And so we announced this last night, huge, and I'm so excited because I don't use Twitch and I don't really use YouTube anymore because I'm banned from both of them, so I never get a chance to catch his content. But now, officially, you can find Stephen Bonnell at Cozy.tv slash Destiny, and I'm told that he'll be doing his first stream this week. So, and... I think he's never streamed there.
People are out of control. Welcome aboard, Stephen Bonnell. It's so great to have you. Welcome to Cozy.TV, and welcome to all of Destiny's. Also, I think Destiny said um, he was going to maybe use it to... Because it's really hard, I think he said... So a lot of, like Nick Funches was just saying, even though he, like... Even in a much more conservative America, I think he would have been banned from Twitch and YouTube. Uh, that Destiny wanted to argue with more conservatives because it feels like on YouTube and Twitch, um, you know, it's a very left-leaning space um, where, like, being the socialist is, like, that's, like, the center. Um, not really. But, you know, that's very... It's very typical to find a lot of socialists, which, you know, doesn't really represent the American landscape, political landscape. So he was hoping to go on there and argue with more conservative types. But, I mean, apparently he never did that. Fans, and we're going to be good hosts. You know, we're going to try our best to welcome these guys in. I know that Steven is a little bit more extreme than us. That's why he's earned the moniker Steven the Swastika Bonnell. You know, they don't call him Steven the Swastika Bonnell for nothing. Anyway, so uh, so he's coming on the platform now. It's all jokes. He's a uh, he's a liberal. He's liberal, and uh, that's great, and it's fine. And we look forward to radicalizing all of his supporters. I welcome them onto the platform, and uh, really, the goal of having him on the platform is that he will bring thousands and thousands of disaffected leftists to the site, and they will watch my show and other shows and be radicalized and turn into, hopefully, far-right extremists. For anyone who's still confused, the point is not that any engagement, positive or negative, can be stretched by all kinds of actors to their benefit. That's obvious, of course they can. The point is that given in these specific cases, many of the engagements are of such a kind that the only sides that could benefit are the ones that are, in Destiny's own words, actively seeking to harm and deprive minorities, why the fuck is Destiny entertaining them? Well, as it happens, we have his reply. I mean, I guess the issue is that if I were to take everything that you've said thus far as uh -huh. being true, which it is true, um, and this is a discussion I've had in my community a lot, we're, I'm basically yeah. left in a world where I can never engage with anybody that I have substantial disagreements with because I would signal boost them. Um, I see that, like, I'm not invoking Vosh to shit talk about it, but, like, Vosh has, like, basically employed this strategy where he said that, like, I'm not going to engage with anybody that I disagree with that has a smaller platform than me. And I think that basically kills my entire business model. <laughs> His business model. What we all know already, he's doing it for money. And when I point out the obvious, he says this. Just to be clear, when you say providing them with funds to hurt people, that's a yes. very like direct, like, I'm literally like sending money to Fuentes, or I'm saying, like, guys, go check out Nick Fuentes here, whatever. Um, I think that that's significantly different than you shouldn't be allowed to engage with anybody because they're smaller than you and they might get more popular off of those engagements, right, or interactions. No, I think that's uh, that's a knockdown argument against doing that in this case. You're talking about people whose careers are predating upon minority groups. So then, this is purely black and white. Well, it's, clearly it's don't. not black and white. Um, but like, with, so then, is your prescription then that if you're a large content creator, you should just never interact with somebody that you perceive to be as like hateful towards minority groups? Yes. If you're doing so in a way that benefits them in their political activities, yes, absolutely. As I, the Nick Fuentes example is illustrative. He's been excised off of YouTube. You functionally act as a lifeline. Okay, well, in that case, I guess I wouldn't have a problem necessarily. I mean, I, I would. I would argue that this thought process is um, bad. But um, I guess more to the point, I don't think I have ever advocated that we should never interact with people we disagree with. I've kind of built my whole platform off of interacting with uh, The people issue people. is not disagreement. Well, here, well real quick, the, re the reason why I'm saying this is just because like, I don't think you can call me hypocritical for doing this because this has kind of been part and parcel of what I've done for 
the, the uh, really the past like five or six years, right? Your justification like, for uh, visiting, if I remember the context correctly, your justification for visiting the House of Ice Poseidon was that he wasn't someone like Lauren Southern, who, again, in your words, went to France to drown refugees. Yeah, that was a that was a while ago. I've changed in my political views in terms of like who I'm willing to engage with or not. I see. So you're you're but now also, willing. Well, but also so it, just 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 to be clear quickly, just so I understand you. Uh huh. Um, the the shift you've made is you're now you're now comfortable materially helping because that's that's what you're doing by regularly that, appearing to this you, person you, in a friendly. I mean, Rose Rist made an excellent video on this. This is largely where I got. I, I understand what you're saying. From. I just you have to have a yeah. few more steps of separation. Otherwise, you are materially helping these people as well. Is that a fact? Yes. Oh, well then enjoy your video game, Stephen. Have a good night. A complete non sequitur. Okay, that obviously wasn't a complete non sequitur. Um, because what he's saying is that him being... He's... Let's just see what his argument is here. And then I'll he had no retort against my actual point, which was really his point that he engaged with these people despite having full knowledge of the consequences for other people for money that he was perfectly happy to I just find that uh, I mean I guess you could say that and maybe Destiny is a just complete cynic but I think it's pretty obvious that um, like Destiny's well known for his political advo advocacy I don't know what President Sunday's advocacy is but I mean it's just hard to say, like, if he were to make, if there was zero chance of him making any money from being a content creator, would he still do it? I'm not sure he would. Um, I, I just, I think it's really important to, I just really think it's important to engage with political opponents. I really do. I think debate is really healthy. To empower people like Lauren Southern and Nick Fuentes with minimal to no pushback, provided it made him richer, so that when he decided to switch tactics and try to reframe the conversation by accusing me of also abetting Southern and Fuentes just by speaking to Destiny, I mockingly accepted his terms and wished him good night, because nothing else stood in need of answer, and nothing else needed to be said. I'm not going to indulge his attempt to sidetrack the conversation and spend hours litigating how many degrees of separation must exist so that the fossilized prune that is the remnants of his- So remember that. So he said he left because he didn't want- um, he doesn't view it as this hyper nuanced thing, and he doesn't want to give Destiny, the master debater, um, an opportunity to exercise his master debate skills um, without President Sunday being well in control of the conversation. So Destiny could justify himself and you know convince the audience that President Sunday is wrong. His conscience can lie down peacefully to die. My task was done. Nobody said anything in that interaction about Destiny talking with people he disagrees with. Nobody even said anything about him talking with people who are pernicious like Lauren Southern and Nick Fuentes. He can debate them, or be friends with them, or stay up to the wee hours of the night flirting with them on his smartphone hell. If Destiny wants to invite Nick and all his Nazi friends over for a big ol' catboy orgy, he has my full blessing, provided he doesn't do so in a manner that financially and politically assists their efforts to fucking kill people. Because that's what Destiny is doing. At the expense of everyone he ever pretended to be defending in the decreasing proportion of cases where he actually argues against them. He is facilitating in function and in fact the real efforts of these individuals to foment the destruction and oppression of entire groups of innocent people. And you, Rose Wrist. Okay, so that's pretty much done. But, okay, so he said, um, he essentially said there in the conclusion that Destiny argues less and less with Lauren Southern. So, this is an argument, this is an argument, um... That is by the way. That's between him. This is an argument. Um, I think in this one, they definitely, I don't know. I guess that, that one is a little pally. They argue in this one for sure. They are... Like, a lot of the interactions that are on YouTube of Destiny and Lauren Southern are 
are debates. And I, I really can't think of a debate that Destiny and Lauren Southern had where Lauren Southern's ideas weren't trumped, weren't made to look as not good ideas or as weak ideas. Um, and I think Destiny's able to get that again and again and again, those interactions with Lauren Southern, is because he's able to maintain a friendly relationship with her where he's not trying to just absolutely destroy and embarrass her every time he comes on stream with him. So she'll keep coming back, and her audience will keep coming back, keep being exposed to these better ideas. Because, I mean, if you're on the left, like, I would, I would hope you think your ideas are better and are good and that they'll beat worse ideas. I understand, like, um, irresponsible platforming. But I, have a, I don't really see that happening with Destiny and Lawrence Southern. I just don't. Um, really just don't. Uh, oh, and there's also that one where uh, Pisco, they had... Lauren Southern was on with Pisco, and Pisco basically got her to um, own up to her, the, the whole boat flare gun thing. But whatever. It's not hugely important. But back to the whole idea of President Sunday didn't want to debate. I, I just, I don't think, I don't, this probably isn't really important to the whole entire narrative. Um, uh, her visibility skyrockets. Doesn't matter how well it goes for her but, in the moment. Um, oh. So this is really important, but I think it's important at the very end because President Sunday says he didn't want to debate Destiny, but by leaving, that's exactly what he did. Because do you, do you think Destiny just dropped the topic, or do you think he continued the conversation just without President Sunday? And just kind of knocks, it just, it appears as if President Sunday left, or ran away even, and then Destiny was just free to say his counter-argument that could just, that would go unchallenged, and it did. More steps of separation, otherwise you are materially helping these people as well. Is that a fact? Yes. Oh, well then enjoy your video game, Stephen. Have a good night. Well, I was going to say, because my, if I'm having a conversation with you, then I do better in viewership than when I'm not having these types of conversations. And if you're helping to elevate my platform, you're inadvertently also elevating the platform that's elevating other racist people. So, but I guess we didn't get to go to that part. Well, um, <laughs> I, I think that would have been a fruitful thing to run down. I don't know why President Sunday would be so against running that down. I feel like President Sunday is an all right debater. He wasn't with not so erudite. He kind of lost his mind there. Um, but I feel like he could have handled it here. He should have handled it here. Instead of letting Destiny just say unchallenged what he feels. Okay. Uh, that was a... <laughs> that was a conversation, I guess. Yeah, imagine needing to take three days to schedule this conversation. Jeez. He was just waiting for a chance to leave and you gave it to him? He sounded like he would he would have been able to engage. Yeah, I but, think um, Sunday could have been Maybe engaged. not. Maybe he just had like this part of the script written out and then he was like done after that, maybe. Oh, true. Maybe it can be a YouTube short. He's a legit schizo. Watch his wash debate. Why don't I watch a bunch of videos on him now? It's fucking weird. They expect one of us in the wreckage, brother, true. My, now the real question is, is he gonna make a video for his YouTube channel about this conversation that was longer than the actual conversation? <laughs> but he also included Rose Who was that? Um, yes. Some insane dude on Twitter called President Sunday. Or like he, I, maybe I shouldn't call him insane, but he, like he engages in a lot of destiny hate, we'll say. You are monetarily helping people you disagree with by engaging with them at any level. Meanwhile, I will engage with you at this level, and I am totally not monetarily helping you, and not the extension. Those people I disagree with. LL tilde tilde L L L. 90 minute video with frame chimping, 100% coming with the title Destiny admits he makes videos for money. 
Secondly, he preempted your argument by of aiding them by engaging with you, by disengaging with you. So he won that debate in my book. Well, but I mean, technically he lost because now he's elevated my platform, arguably for greed. One thing I don't like is when people, I don't like it when people try so hard to preempt your arguments that they will like, that they'll try really hard not to agree with pretty obvious stuff. Like when you say something like, well, when you make an argument, aren't you trying to convince somebody of something? And they're like, no. Like, well, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Isn't that like, isn't that kind of the entire purpose of making an argument is to convince somebody? No. Well, okay. I sure, I guess. And so President Sunday said it wasn't an argument because Destiny had agreed to it, to the, the premise with Demon Mama. <clears throat> Destiny said, yeah. But I don't, I don't think Destiny was really like full heartedly agreeing. I think he was just recognizing it as this is a premise. You're setting up this premise to make a point. Let's get to the conclusion so I can see where this premise goes to what conclusion, and then we can talk about it. So when he was like saying yes, he was like, "Yeah, I understand where you're going." Not necessarily like, "Yeah, I agree with your premise and conclusion." <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, if that's, if, I guess, okay. You think the premise of the beginning is actually true? It's kind of just accepted in this community, but has anyone actually studied it? Well, the issue, we've had this conversation a lot in my chat, and now I just kind of like disregard it. Because like basically people will say, um, uh, this is kind of where, oh, here it is. This is kind of where Vosh is at at the moment, where he's like, I'm not going to engage with any smaller creator because um, I don't want to elevate their platform. But it, it essentially just turns you into like a... Um, I don't want to say clout shark, but you're basically like, I'll only debate you if you're famous enough, is basically what you're saying, which feels kind of weird, especially if the only way that you climbed as a small content creator is by having larger people like me debate you. So it seems a little bit weird to turn around and do that. Um, but then it also precludes you from basically debating like anybody that disagrees with you unless you can gain off of them, which I think is actually, that's actually the greedy position, right? I'm not going to have a debate with you unless I stand to financially gain from it, which is a little bit weird for me, but... Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, so what Disney said there, I'd say it didn't look like President Sunday was being too terribly convincing and maybe should have, you know, sparted out with Destiny. Um, and I think Destiny straw man to President Sunday there. Because President Sunday's big disagreement was that that Destiny is having uh, Nick Fuentes or Lauren Southern on um, but not having substantial disagreements with them, more hanging out with them and allowing them to sell their charisma. Um, to an audience, but I think at that point, I mean, what hope is there for the world if that's how you see it? You think people as just like just have zero conviction whoever the funniest person or whatever person in the room is the person whose ideas they're going to agree with. And I'm not saying charisma doesn't help you win an audience, but I think at the end of the day, better ideas will win, against, will win out against worse ideas. And I think a great way to do that is by having a healthy debate discourse with people. And I think it's hard for a lot of people to have a healthy discourse with each other because they're scared of getting dunked on viciously or they're scared to get embarrassed or whatever. So I think a lot of people who have substantive disagreements will rarely interact with each other. Like that's I I have a suspicion that's why Bosch doesn't like to disagree with Destiny, because I think Destiny's a very good debater. Bosch is a very good debater. Um and so I think that he has a really hard time grappling with Destiny in the way because typically Vosh can kind of just dunk on people like he's really good at that just embarrassing people I think he's a really hard time that hard time with that with Destiny where Destiny can almost kind of embarrass him um but I think this kind of goes to a larger point so I'm on the left I'm a liberal and I think I think my ideas are the best right I don't know my if my ideas are the best that's why I like to talk to people, get their perspective, see their reasoning, see their lead up, um, you know, challenge my own ideas. Hopefully my ideas get better. And I think, I think I find it really unfortunate that in general, we don't have more of a debate kind of culture. And you might say we do because like obviously debate's huge, but I think, I 
I just find it really disheartening that if you're someone who talks about politics on the internet, it's okay for you to say, I'm never going to debate anyone. Or you putting like very, very heavy restrictions on who you debate. Like, for example, Hassan, I haven't seen, the last person I saw him de- debate was, uh, who's that psychopath? Um, Christian Walker, a conservative. And, you know, he freaked out. I think that's just not good. Um, I think Chud Logic has it. Like, I think you have to just have... You have just to, $67. I think you have to be willing to know you could be wrong in your ideas, and that's why you should seek out debate. So he had this... So Hassan doesn't debate. And I think Hassan doesn't debate. because I, Personally, I don't think Hassan has good ideas. Um, I mean, on social stuff, great. I think economically, the, social, the socialism stuff, not great. And so just know that doesn't get confused. I mean, like, social stuff as in, like, gay rights, LGBT rights, um, minority rights, you know, all that stuff. Um, You know, everyone's created equal. Have at it. You know, judge them by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. Me and Hassan are 100% on the same exact page with that. But I think Hassan's, you know, he's very socialism-brained. And I think he's a hard time interacting with people who don't see it his way and he's so he he avoids debate so then he can meet a fucking memer like christian walker who i mean i don't i don't want to say i know christian walker well at all but he seems like a dumbass to me he seems like someone who's almost like whole political position is like a joke like it's like one of the most impressive like I don't know, performative art pieces I've ever seen. Because it, it just, it, it's one of those things where I can't believe anyone takes him seriously. I think people like him solely because he's just funny. I don't think he's convincing anyone that conservatives are right. And so Hassan had a debate with Christian Walker, and they talked about trans, um, are, trans women are women, I think. Um, and Christian Walker was just giving these like very low tier, like typical arguments, like arguments you would expect like anyone like you talk to like a conser- like a random conservative on the street who doesn't fucking care about the news or anything. They just like they're conservative because they're conservative. That's how they were brought up or for one, some some dumb reason. Um, and so they were doing like the very low tier trans arguments, and Hassan was ha- like just couldn't help but he just couldn't get over them. He couldn't grapple with them, grapple with them well. And you'd expect someone who's as big of a political commentator as Hassan to know these arguments and know how to navigate those arguments and know how to destroy those arguments. Didn't. And so one of his chatters said, hey, um, I think next time you bring in someone, a conservative like Christian Walker, where you know you're going to have like a kind of debate conversation with them, you should maybe kind of like brush up on your topic so you're just a little bit more prepared so that chatter said that and this is how Hassan reacted you for the record my issue as a trans person is the fact that you think okay this is not a safe space shut the fuck up that's it and then like here's the other part like you for the record my issue as a trans person is the fact that you a guy you think my stun locks are bad? Jesus Christ. Everybody does how bad the sun stun locks get sometimes. Know, this is crazy. <laughs> Literally just sat here fucking molding for like hour, <laughs> two hours about something. Fucking hell. Guy that isn't super well versed on trans shit brought on a known transphobe knowing he might bring up transphobic shit. You aren't exactly a Vosh at trans debates. But the reason he's not a Vosh at, uh, at debate is because he doesn't ever debate. So his ideas don't get challenged. So it's very easy. It's very easy to dunk on. Like, he, it's basically like Stephen fucking Crowder. You know what I mean? Stephen Crowder, like, does. You might say Stephen Crowder debates, but really what he does is he. Stephen Crowder does a bunch of research. And then he goes to a college campus. So then he can talk to a bunch of people 
who are basically on the same level as Christian Walker, who they have a very passing understanding of of the arguments, of the topics. Um, you know, they don't really dig into them. They don't really do a lot of debates or all this stuff. They have no reason to. And then so you can easily destroy their arguments because you did a little bit more research. You have a little bit more nuance. You, you see all the surface area with all, and all its weaknesses. And Hassan doesn't do that. So then you can give very weak arguments to Hassan and he'll have a hard time getting around them. It will be embarrassing. They're arguments that he should be able to destroy. And he loses his mind at the smallest part of critique, which is obviously why he doesn't debate. I hope, I hope that the rest of your life is as horrible as it is every single day. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> oh my god, that should be a copy pasta. I hope, I hope. Because at the end of the day, I think it would be really awesome if we had like a very uh, just in, an incredible debate. I don't know, debatosphere, where if you're a big person who talks about politics, you should be shamed for not debating people if people want to debate you. Because then I think it gives space for people like Hassan or Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder to always have all of these opinions on politics and then rarely or never debate competent people. You know, like Stephen Crowder, like Hassan doesn't debate at all. Uh, Stephen Crowder does, he debates college students. And then Ben Shapiro, he debated Anna Kasperian, which, I mean, like, was like once, like the first, first real debate he did against someone. But it was also like at a political conference in front of a crowd, so it doesn't really count because then the crowd gets involved and just kind of becomes a mess when you do things like that. And the, the crowd was clearly on Ben Shapiro's side. And I think that's just really sad because I think Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder have really bad ideas. Um, but it's not, embarrassing. it's not embarrassing for them to not debate people who are competent. And you saw with Steven Crowder when he got on that call with Ethan from H3H3 and uh, Sam Cedar joined and he was allowed to run. And that wasn't that embarrassing. Like that should have been, that should have been devastating for Steven Crowder's career. That should have looked really, really bad. Like, you're this guy who talks about politics all the time. And then, ostensibly, the, uh, the debate stays the same. The same topics. I mean, I, I guess it, it's a little fishy for someone to switch out. It doesn't even really matter. I don't need to talk about this. I just think it's really, like, I think it's really, really sad that people can be really big in politics but never have their ideas challenged in a debate. And I think debate is really, really good. Just wish we all cared more about it. All right, end of topic. Geek.